Hiya, Ten. It appears that my um, headphones aren't working, so I'm attempting this with some different headphones, so that's why the recent upload didn't work. Um, I'm going to have to do this really quickly and whiz through it, um, but it might just help a little bit if you were unsure in today's lesson. So the reason we're doing this is because um, we're meant to be carrying out some coastal field work this term at Dawlish Warren. So myself and Mr Gilbert on Wednesday the 24th of June will be going to Dawlish Warren and doing some virtual field work. Um, I'm hoping there might be an opportunity for a bit of live field work um, during our lesson on Wednesday the 24th. Um, but I will obviously be recording it and posting it on YouTube as well for you to use in your lessons. So the the purpose of today's lesson, it shouldn't be a very long lesson, is to understand why field work is carried out in coastal areas and what sort of tasks can be carried out. Um, but before we start, anyone who can email me or, um, with the answer to this starter question, this is my daughter Daisy. She's playing around at a beach in North Devon, Puttsborough, one of my favourite beaches. And there were these strange landforms on the beach. Um, if anyone can tell me what they're called, it's an A-level um, concept, but if you then um, you can have a praise point. OK, <clears throat> so um, geography field work. Kate Humble quoted um, a couple of weeks ago on Spring Watch, actually, that field work makes geography come to life. It puts everything into context in glorious 3D and helps students really grasp how geography literally shapes the world around us. And we're really lucky living in Devon that we've got a lot of beautiful landscapes on our doorstep. So next time you're out walking along Sidmouth or Branscombe or in the woods or more or wherever you go, have a look around and actually think what kind of questions you could ask about that landscape and how you might answer the questions with data. So what kind of things could you collect? What kind of methods might you use? That's basically what fieldwork's all about. So it aims to answer a question or test a hypothesis or it helps us to understand concepts that we've learnt in class more clearly. So next week's fieldwork is going to do all of that. We're going to um, show you some things that you've learnt in class, um, talk you through some of those things in a real place. And we're also going to test a hypothesis and show you some methods that you could use doing fieldwork. <clears throat> so it's um, hopefully going to help you. OK, um, some of you might want to draw this or print it and stick it in. This is basically the six stages to a geographical inquiry or a piece of field work. So firstly, you have to do the planning, um, which is usually done by your teacher at GCSE. Um, but at A level, you have to do the planning yourself. Then you would be going out and collecting the data. So usually this term, we would be going to Dawlish Warren and you'd be doing things like counting waves, measuring pebbles, measuring the angle of the beach. But this year, because we're in the middle of partial lockdown, myself and Mr Gilbert will do that for you on Wednesday next week. When you've collected all the data, the next stage, the yellow hexagon, you present it. So there's no good just having a table of data. You want to put it in graphs or plot it on maps or annotate photographs you've taken. So data presentation is ways of actually making the data come to life, making the data look appealing and easier to understand. When you've presented it, you then analyse it. So you have to describe what the data is showing. And we do this quite a lot in class. So you look at a graph, you describe the pattern that the graph's showing, you give some figures to support what you're saying, and you then try and suggest reasons why. So you try and explain why the data shows that. And then you conclude. So you write a conclusion which answers the question that you set out to try and find the answer to. But you have to support that um, answer with evidence and you have to explain it. So it's like a giant P paragraph. And then the evaluation is doing what we do all the time. So what worked well in your inquiry? How could we, what could we do even better if? And what would we do next time if we were going to carry out another piece of field work? So when we do the virtual field work next week, you're going to be writing a little bit about each of those stages. Um, and so that diagram will become really helpful. 
Um, in the original video that I did, I sort of talked through this a bit more, but I'm not I haven't got time now to do that. Um, so this is just a copy from the syllabus and it tells you the purpose of fieldwork. Um, basically, in your exams, um, you on paper one, physical geography, you will have a section that's 18 marks about fieldwork. So you need to understand um, methods of data collection, how to present data, what your conclusions were, that kind of thing. And I'll talk you through that after we've done the fieldwork next week. Um, these are the two pages in the textbook, which I think most of you seem to have read through and had a go at the tasks. Um, the key things really are explains um, what a hypothesis is. So you might want to make notes on what a hypothesis is. And figure B does also tell you some of the different techniques that you can use while at the beach. And some of these will be showing you next week. So the written task for today, which again, well done to those of you that have persevered and done this. Um, I want you to design your own piece of fieldwork. So think about a local beach. So it might be Sidmouth, Beer, Branscombe, Exmouth, whichever beach you know the best. And um, think of a title or a question that you would like to answer about that beach. So it could be, um, should we protect Pennington Point from further erosion? It might be, um, do the rock groins at Sidmouth affect tourism? Um, it could be, is sea level change um, having an impact at Branscombe? It could be anything to do with coasts. Um, how does longshore drift affect the beach at Exmouth? That sort of thing. When you've come up with a question, um, I want you to use the textbook and your own knowledge to think of methods that you could carry out to try and answer the question. But don't just jot them down, actually try and write why that method would be helpful. So. Um, if you say that you're going to do a wave count, why is that going to help you answer your question? If you've done all that, most of you could do question four, which is sort of practicing analysing data. So it's looking at data that someone else collected and trying to think about what the data shows, which is good exam technique. And then some of you could have a go at question five, which is about a cost benefit analysis. Um, even if you don't do question five, it will be worth writing what cost benefit analysis means. And it's worth bearing in mind that costs don't always have to be monetary costs. So it doesn't always have to be the cost of something like a million pounds or whatever. It can be an economic, sorry, an environmental cost. So it might be that um, the sea defence is causing a, you know, it's looking very ugly. It makes the environment look bad. Or it could be a social cost that it's having an impact on people because they can't actually access the beach. So it doesn't have to be money. And you might want to write that down in your book, even if you don't do question five. OK, I hope that helps a little bit to any of you that were confused and apologies for the issues with the sound on the previous two that I attempted. Um, hope you have a good day and hopefully I'll see some of you on Friday because I'm going to try and do a Google Meet quiz in our Friday period five lesson. So it'll only be sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, but it'll be great to see some of you there. Have a good day. Bye.